Good afternoon and welcome to our first micro teaching video on public health between 1800 and 1914 and we've got three things we want to do by the end of this session. Here they are. Number one, describe conditions in British cities after 1750. Number two, explain why so little was done to improve things. And number three, evaluate the significance of the reasons for the lack of improvement. Let's start at 1750. In 1750, Britain was a country dominated by farming, but this began to change quickly for these reasons. People mainly farmed with the strip system, which involved a number of people in a village, all holding a small area of land known as a strip on which they could grow crops. This changed after 1750 with something called enclosure, which involved richer farmers buying up all the strips of land and farming it themselves for profit. Some of the people who used to own those strips worked for these richer farmers, but others had no choice but to move quickly to the growing cities. Now, cities at this time were growing because of mechanisation, the invention of machines, which meant for the first time it was more efficient and more productive to manufacture things in a factory than it was at home. Now, these big factories were owned by rich people who also then built the houses for their new workers. These rich people were not concerned with the niceties of life, building these houses quickly and without much planning. And as a result, those houses were overcrowded, they were cheap, there were few toilets, and there were often no sewers, with the dirty water being flushed straight into the rivers that ran through the major industrial cities. Making these rivers even dirtier was the fact there was no laws to stop the factories pumping industrial waste into these rivers too, and people were drinking from these things. Predictably, the result was mass disease, with thousands and thousands of people dying from cholera, typhoid, and typhus. The most feared of these diseases was cholera, a horrible disease that causes you to vomit and to have diarrhea and will eventually kill you through sheer dehydration. The rich realise that the centre of these cities are unhealthy and move out. They move out to higher areas on the edge of the cities, believing that the fresh air will keep them healthy. This is because they had the idea of miasma, the idea it was dirty smells which would make you ill. Now we might look at this now and think this is disgusting, it's inhumane. How on earth did it go on for so long and why did no one do anything about it? Here are the reasons why they didn't. First of all, and most obviously, the poor had no money. They couldn't afford to make conditions to their own houses. Secondly, there was no germ theory. We're a long way before Pasteur and Cox, so no one actually really knew what was making people ill. Now this led to this attitude here, with many rich people believing that poor people behaving badly was making them ill. They believed that it was poor people's immorality, for example, gambling, alcoholism, prostitution, and they thought that if poor people just cleaned up their act, they would get healthier too. And linked to this too, the rich people see no benefit in spending their own money on helping clear up poor people's housing. And who could blame them? After all, they're living in the nicer areas on the outskirts and aren't as affected by these conditions as the poorer people who are unfortunate enough to work for them. And finally, only the rich can vote, which means there's no incentive for the government to listen to the concerns of the poor, poor people at all. We do begin to get some changes in the 1830s and the 1840s. This time a civil servant called Chadwick does a lot of work on trying to prove the link between dirt and illness, and he does go some way to doing that. It's because of this that in 1848 the Board of Health is set up. The Board of Health is a voluntary attempt to clean up the cities, and it allowed local areas to appoint inspectors to check that things weren't too dirty, to clear rubbish, and to improve conditions generally. The most important thing to remember about this act, though, is it's voluntary only. The government doesn't have the power to force any of the local towns or cities to do these things, so it doesn't have that much of an impact. And in fact, it may actually have made things worse, because Chadwick believed in miasma too, which meant a lot of the dirt that was cleared away was flushed straight into the rivers too. And again, people will be drinking this and becoming even more ill. Which is the reason why Basil Jett's proposal of sewers in the 1830s and 1840s is ignored because people actually don't know that it's the dirty water that's making them ill. In 1858, the Board of Health collapses. It ceases to exist for all the reasons that we looked at in this part of the diagram and a new one too. Surprisingly, the poor people themselves don't like the act and they want it to end. This is because of the bullying and arrogant attitude of the richer inspectors who come round. The poor people dislike being talked down to and this attitude is definitely very real. 
with poorer people saying, just leave me alone. I'd rather be free and dirty than be bullied. That's it. It's pretty depressing up to this point, but it does get better later. Quickly review the, check, the focus questions and then we're done. Number one, can you describe conditions in British cities after 1750? That's all of this here. Focus question two, can you explain why so little was done to improve things? That's all of this here and also the attitude of the poor people themselves. And finally, well that's down to you, take a minute to think about it. What's the most important reason that no real improvements were made to public health before the 1850s? That's all for now. Thank you for listening. More videos to follow.